Well, let's turn to Matthew chapter 22. We're going to read one verse here, then we're going to go to the Old Testament, kind of like what we did last week. Last week we talked about answering the call and we discussed Moses. Tonight we're going to discuss answering the call, but we're going to talk about Samuel. So we're going to read some, a couple of different passages from Samuel and him answering the call of God. But something that's kind of a theme tonight that the Lord was kind of speaking to me as we was uh, praying in tongues there is today is the age of compromise. And that's not a good thing. We're, we're watching many good Christian, many good Christians turn their back on God for compromise, water things down, and we'll say get lukewarm, get more, we'll say one foot in the world, one foot trying to stand on the things of God, and that it's that compromise that many people find themselves in, and when push comes to shove, nine times out of ten, people are going to lean to the world rather than stand on the things of God. So it's kind of like, you know, if somebody's, we'll say, I just learned this term, Roman well, well, I've already forgot it now. I apparently didn't learn it well. But it's kind of like Roman, R- Roman riding, something of that nature, where you stand on two horses. You got one foot on one horse, one foot on the other horse, and you're riding both of them at the same time. Well, eventually, if those horses start to separate, if, those, if one of them is, is, we'll say they begin to separate as you're riding, and we won't paint the picture of one of them stops because that would be horrific. But if, if the horses begin to separate, now all of a sudden that rider has to choose which one am I going to lean toward. Am I going to lean toward the one on the left or am I going to lean the one, to one on the right? And of course, for you, the way you're sitting looking at me, that's going to be the opposite. But anyway, but when you're standing on both of those horses, you've got to choose which horse are you going to settle on. Which horse are you going to remain on? Well, many a Christian in today's time, in these last days, are choosing the horse of culture, the horse of, we'll say, modern times, the horse of you know, the enemy or the horse of flesh, however you want to say that. That would, say, that would in the sense, still be the same horse of, of compromise. Why? Because, one, we shouldn't be riding both horses at the same time because Jesus says you can't serve two masters. So you're going to have to choose one to begin with. So hopefully more people will say, you know what, I'm tired of playing, you know, this Roman riding with, with the world and with God. I'm just going to choose God. I'm going to choose him first. I'm going to choose him out of everything else. And I'm just going to settle on the things of God. That's what God has designed his kingdom to do, his people to do, to settle on his kingdom, to settle on the things that he has said, and for us to settle down in that and be blessed and us be faithful to him and for him to be faithful to us. But many times, again, when push comes to shove, people, when they have to make that choice, they will choose the compromise horse. Why? Because it's easier. It seems to be easier because it's maybe what the flesh desires. It's maybe, you know, whatever, whatever it speaks the loudest, whatever has their ear is what they're going to turn to. If God has your ear, it's a no-brainer. You go with God. If the world has your ear or your flesh has your ear, then it's a no-brainer for your flesh to go with the flesh. And it's going to kick and fight against your spirit, man. And whoever is stronger, whoever the louder voice is in your life, that's the one that's going to win. We we'll say, well, how does it fit into this, Pastor? Well, we're going to see that it's actually a theme for tonight anyway that wasn't intended to be. Amen. So Matthew chapter 22, verse 14, kind of our theme verse for this series, answering the call. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. So in other words, the call goes out. This is Jesus speaking. It says the call goes out to anybody, to everybody, but there's only few that's chosen. Well, who's the chosen? The ones that choose to answer the call. That's the chosen, the one that say, I'll answer that. I'll take that. I'll pick up the phone, so to speak. I'll answer that call, God. I'll answer that code, call to be with you. I'll answer whatever you're welcoming me, whatever you're asking me to come to. I choose to come with you. I choose to go with you. And so we see this verse, and we know that there's a parable before it, and we can, we've preached that many times as well. But this verse specifically says, and we know this is a very famous verse, for many are called. That means the call goes out to many, but only few will actually answer it. And last week we talked about Moses, as we said, just a little bit of review. When that call goes out to Moses, how many other calls did God put out there to deliver his people from Egypt? Now, the Bible doesn't tell us that, but how many, how many others did God call 
And then nobody really answered, and then all of a sudden here comes Moses. Moses answers the call, and he's the one that is now forever written in history of being the one that God used to deliver the people out of Egypt. Now, we know that the call also means answering the call to be a Christian, answering the call to become a child of God. We get that. But there's also other callings in our life that we still must choose. We still have to choose to answer. Now, as we also said last week, that doesn't mean everybody's going to be like I am. I'm going to be a pastor or even be up here in front of everybody teaching or preaching. That's not everybody's calling. But what is our calling? All of us have a calling from God, whether it's you know, to be an usher, whether it's to be a safety person, whether it's to be a teacher on you know, the kingdom kids, no matter what it is, or maybe it is a call to be a fivefold minister. We, you know, that's, that's dependent upon the Lord, what he says. But God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us, so that means he has a calling for each and every one of us, and it, it requires us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and what God tells us for us to answer that call and to do what he wants us to do. If we're not careful, compromise will tell us, well, this over here is my calling. I'm just called to sit and watch. Well, that's not what God has for you. Now, maybe for a season to gain some rest, things of that nature, because you have maybe exhausted yourself or maybe you're new at a church and you got to maybe take a season just to kind of get your breath, but also kind of acclimate yourself to the way this church operates, things of that nature. But there's going to be a time that God's going to say, all right, you've rested or you've acclimated or whatever the situation is, now I need to use you here. I've called you here, now I need to use you here. But still, even that, we don't go to churches that we just say, you know what, I like that, or I like their youth thing, or I like their this, or I like their that. No, no, no. I don't care what statistics say. The Word of God says we're to go where He places His name, where He calls us to go. Now, we... With that, there's a lot of statistics that will tell you, well, so-and-so people, they went to this church because of their youth program, or they went to this church because they liked the pastor. Well, I don't think that's here, but anyway. But there's so many other statistics that you can run down through, and it really will let you in on the way people find a church or the way they deem going to a church. But really, the Word of God tells us we're called to specific places it may not tell us exactly where we're called. That's where we've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit and say, all right, God, where is it that you're calling me? Where is it that I'm to be discipled? Where is it that I'm to gain up everything that I have need of to fulfill the plans and purposes that you have for my life? Now, I praise God that he called me to my pastor, Pastor Chris, and in Grafted Word Church, and I praise God for that because there's been so many things that he's equipped me with. I mean, so many things that God has used him to help me and still to this day helps me. Why? Because I'm still called to him. Amen. Even as a pastor, I still have a pastor to submit to to help me because just because you become a five-fold minister doesn't mean that, that from there on out you don't need anybody helping you. You're always going to need help. If truth be told, you need more help because you're a five-fold minister. Amen. But many are called, but few are chosen. So now let's go to Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 3. We're going to take a look here at Samuel's life and how he answered the call. He actually answers the call a couple of times. Many times when you see Samuel, you'll see the the pattern of Samuel crying out to God, God answering. But there are a few times that God calls out to Samuel and Samuel answers. And that's what we're going to focus on tonight. So 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. And the child, Samuel, ministered unto the Lord before Eli, which is the priest, which is where he was, I want to say, I don't want to say dropped off, but where he was put because his mother, Hannah, wanted, wanted, wanted a child. She couldn't have children. She comes to the, the temple. She starts praying to God, and God gives her a child, and so because he gives her a child, she says, my child, will, I will 